Habakkuk. I'm asking a lot of you. Can you find it? You can find it, praise God. Habakkuk, you know where it's at. It's right next to Nahum. You were reading that this morning, weren't you? <laughs> no, praise God. If you, uh, you know, you go to Matthew and then start flipping left, you'll get there before long. Praise God. But it's only got three chapters. It'd be easy to skip over. Or you could just turn to page 926 if you've got a Bible like mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Habakkuk chapter 2. I had a lot to overcome. Well, not, you know, everything's relative. I had some things to overcome to get here tonight. <clears throat> but I'm here. Any of you like that? Had some things to overcome to be here? Praise God. Well, we're here. Let's, let's get the most out of it. Amen. God has something for us tonight. Praise God. And uh, so what I have to share with you tonight for just a few moments is, uh, is your faith ready for 2018? That's what I want to ask and, and minister to you about for a minute. Is your faith, we're going to call it a ready faith for 2018. I want to wake up every day and have a ready faith. Amen. A faith that's ready yeah. to believe God, yeah. uh, to believe God's word, stand on God's word, appropriate his promises, <laughs> give the devil a bad day. Amen. Take territory. Amen. Amen. Conquer things. Overcome things. Help people. Amen. Praise God. You know, I decided, I made one decision I made this week. Uh, I'm never going to let myself get tired of helping people. Amen. That's what we're anointed to do. All of us in the body of Christ. We are blessed. How come? To be a blessing. Amen. Are you ever tempted like that? Oh, no, don't do that. Just count it a joy. That's what I'm doing. I've just decided I'm going to be helping people more and more and more until my last day on this planet. You know, why stay on the planet? If you're not going to do something, let's help somebody. Praise God. You know, there is a heaven out there. And it's better than here. Why stay here? Well, Paul said in Philippians, you're in Habakkuk, that you found it, stay there. Praise God. He said, I'm going to stay here because you need me. I'm going to stay here because I can still bear fruit. Amen. Amen. But you know, as I endeavor to reach out and uh, want to help more and more people in bigger and bigger ways, I'm going to need God to move in my life. Right? Because the resources, the energy, the time, all of that, uh, that's finite, isn't it? But can he increase that? Come on, he can increase that. That's one of the things I'm believing for him to do for me in 2018, is that he'll enlarge my capacity to do more, to do bigger things, to help people, to intervene in bigger ways. Come on. Amen. Praise God. And that's not to say that I'm not believing for myself in some areas, and me and my house and my things. So in Habakkuk chapter 2, uh, we're going to read the first four verses. And then I have some things to share with you. Notice what Habakkuk... Now Habakkuk was an Old Testament prophet. That means he was a seer. He spoke for God. He was a minister. And look at what he said in verse 1. He said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And I will watch to see what he, referring to God, what he will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tables or tablets. We don't have tables or tablets today. We have tablets today, don't we? Yeah, praise God, I've got mine here. Uh, praise God, but they were talking about tablets of stone. That he may run that reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and lie not. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Now, when you read the King James, you, really, you need to study. Right? Because here it says, it will not t though it tarry, wait for it, for it will not tarry. Well, is that a, we found a contradiction in the Bible. Let's throw it away. No, it's two Hebrew words. Two different Hebrew words, and, and I don't know why they both translated them... Uh, in the same word, tarry. Uh, this word, the first word where it says, though it tarry, it literally means, though it be delayed. 
though it be delayed. In the Hebrew, it means delayed. If it's delayed, what does he say? Wait for it. He didn't say give up on it. He said wait for it or expect it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. This Hebrew word means it will not be late. Now we understand this about building this building, don't we? God gave us a vision. We wrote it down. We heralded it in all kinds of different ways. And did we have to wait for it? And wait for it. And people would say, we're going to get to building this year, Pastor? I, I learned after a few years to say, I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> Amen. But we waited and we waited and we waited. But did it come? It came. And according to the plan of God, it says it will not be late. So if you need to mark your Bible so you don't forget that, so you're not confused in the future... It says, though the vision be delayed, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not be late. And sometimes you need to tell yourself that. Amen. One translation says, though it seems slow in coming. One translation says, though it seems slow in coming. Have you ever had a dream? You ever, had, you ever prayed a prayer? And you're like, where is it at? Right? Though it seems slow in coming. Did he say give up on it? No, he didn't say give up on it. He said wait for it. Hold on to it. Expect it. Amen. Then in verse 4 it says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up, in, in meaning in pride, is not upright in him or in God, but the just shall live by his faith. By his faith. The Hebrew word here though is not faith, it's faithfulness. Faithfulness. How are the righteous going to live? By their faithfulness. That's why a lot of believers don't make it. They're not faithful. What does it mean to be faithful? Reliable, consistent, trustworthy, over and over, day after day, month after week after week, month after month, year after year. They're consistent. They're on it. They are faithful. That's how you're going to live. We ought to not live by trying and then giving up and then trying, being up and then being down. No, 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 no. Amen? Praise God. All right. But back to, you know, we're, we're ending a year. We're coming into a new year. And God has, I, my expectancy is I've begun to seek God for 2018. I haven't done a lot, but I have begun to seek God about next year. Quickly, my heart is, whoa, I'm getting excited in my heart. Amen. About what God has in store for us next year. Now, every year for the last several, I have encouraged you, and I will again this year, to write down. We, we call it write the vision. That's what it says right here. Isn't that right? And so, if we're going to be ready, have a ready faith for 2018, I want to just take this passage and lift out three steps that we see here. Three steps here that we see. Uh walked out here in the experience of this prophet. First of all, in verse number one, we see the first step. It says, I will stand upon my watch, I will set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say to me. So step number one, to be ready for next year, is seek God. That is what he's saying here in this verse. He said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna separate myself from people, I'm going to set myself, one translation says, up on the rampart. I'm going to go up on the mountain. I'm going to, I'm going to get up on the wall. I'm going to get up there by myself, and I'm going to wait on God. I'm going, to, I'm going to ask God some questions. I am going to seek Him, and I'm going to wait to hear what He would say to me. Many of you, you're just like me. You don't know what God would have you do in 2018. We're not there yet. You know, one of the things I do every December is I start saying, Father, would it please you to pat for me to pastor this church another year? Right? Praise God. Because I, I'm not going to assume that just because he had me do it the last 16 that he wants me to do it in year 17. I don't have anything different in my heart. But I'm going to ask him. Amen. I'm not going to let myself get stuck in a rut. You shouldn't either. God's got something new for us. Amen? Even if it's just a new dimension, a higher level of what, you, of what you've been doing. 
Y'all with me tonight? Come on, praise God. Now, as you say, Pastor, I would much rather you seek God and come down and tell me. You know, that's what the Israelites did way back when. They, they said, we don't want to talk to God. You, Moses, you just go up on the mount and whatever he tells you to do, we'll do. And they promised it. And how many of you know they didn't even do that? They got mad at him. Amen. So step number one for you and I to be ready for 2018 is you need to set some time aside to seek God and to ask him some questions. Father God, what do you have for me in 2018? What is on your mind and heart for my family in 2018? What would you like to do? What would you like me to do? Amen. Father, what, what would you have me reach for in my business, in my career, in my financial life? Father, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, talk to me about some things you want. Are you with me? Now, how long did uh, Habakkuk seek God? Read verse 1. How long did he, how long did he seek God? We, we don't know if it was days or hours or minutes or months, do we? But what did he do? He went up there and he sought God until what? Until God spoke to him. How long should you seek God? Until he answers you. And let me just tell you something, okay? That will be longer than your flesh would like. It's going to be long. You're going to pray longer than your flesh wants to pray. <laughs> That's right. Amen. But would it be worth it to, to get it, to hear from heaven? Because, you know, most Christians, most people in this church won't do it. I'm preaching on it, but they won't do it. And I just know that's reality. But a few of you will. A few of you will give it an earnest go. And I, I guess those are the ones I'm preaching for and believing for the, best, the rest of you to come up. Amen. Glory to God. Because most people are going to meander and wander and not know and just hope and trust that what they're doing is in line with God's plan. Mm -hmm. And if that's what you're doing, you just know 99.9% .9 of the time you're off. Oh, right. Amen. Amen. Uh, but I want to be in the company. I want to know. I want to be accurate. I want to be on time. I want to be in the will of God. I want His highest. I want His best. Yeah. I want it for my church. I want it for my pastoral role. I want it in my marriage. I want it in my family. I want it in my business that I have now. I want it in my finance. I want it in my children. I want it for every arena. I want His best. Well, I've got to pay a price. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But you know what? Hebrews 11.6 says something wonderful, and we, most of us could quote it, but we forget it. And that is that it is impossible to please, please God without faith. Yeah. But what does the rest of that say? It says, for he that comes to God must believe that he is. And what? That he is a rewarder. Who does he reward? Those who diligently seek him. What is the reward for those that diligently seek him? The answer on what they're seeking him about. That's the reward. And that puts you in an elite class of people. They're not wondering. They're not hoping. They know. So step number one to have a ready faith for 2018 is to seek God and to hear from Him. Y'all got that? Yeah. All right. That's up to you whether you do it or not. All right. Number two. Number two. What do you think number two is based on the passage we read? Write it down. Isn't that the instruction? Look at verse uh, number 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. So evidently up in his prayer time, he had a vision. In other words, a vision means he saw something. But when you study this word in the Hebrew, it literally, it, it just literally, it was probably a vision, something he saw in a visible form because that's how God will minister to prophets a lot. Okay? But it just simply, simply means divine guidance or divine revelation. Are you right? All right? What do, when we get a, a, divine, a supernatural insight into the mind of God about something related to us, what are we to do? Amen. I don't know if you guys watch me come in and out, but you'll always see me with something like this. Amen? 
I, I just got this one. Come on, I were in California. I was just about, just about tore up my last one. So it's, it's full of blank pages. And this is something that I have with me to write down what I hear God say to me. Name it. I don't care. You could go into the secular world, uh, just read after materials on highly successful people, and they will tell you, write it down. Write down your dream. Write down your goal. Write down what you want. There's something powerful about writing it down. In fact, one uh, leadership expert I read after one time says, just writing it down increases the chances that that will come to pass by 80%. Just, there's something powerful about, how you know God just didn't say His Word? He had it written down. Just trust me on this. As you seek God for 2018, what are you going to set your faith on? What are you going to reach out to do? What would God have you to do? Write it down. Y'all could do better tonight. Come on, I had to overcome all the stuff. You could open up your mouth and say amen. amen. Praise God. Uh, God told him, write it down. Write it down. Amen. So uh, one of the reasons why he would have us write it down is so that we won't forget. We're busy, aren't we? We've got a lot going on in our little brains. You ever notice like in the digital world... You know, I guess, first of all, it was like a kilobyte. And then things went up to a megabyte. We thought megabyte. Oh, man, megabyte. That's really big. And then it's up to what? Gigabyte now? And that gigabyte's going away. Now we're up to terabyte. And terabyte, that's a whole lot of data compared to a kilobyte. Right? And you think about our brains. They're, they're supernatural, but... We got a lot going on in our brain, don't we? And we need, we need the divine revelation that God gave to us written down so that we can keep it in front of us. It'll keep us on course. It will keep us reminded. Right? When, you get your, when you're going somewhere you've never been before, usually a lot of us now will use MapQuest or GPS. I keep that thing close by. Turn the volume up. I'm paying attention. Why? I don't want to get lost. Right? What good would it be for God to speak to you? And you go, oh, yes. Oh, and you bask in that. And then, you, and then even the next day, the next morning, you're like, what did he say? That's right. Somebody tell me what he said. And I mean, leadership people, sinners have figured this out. If I write it down and keep it in front of me, it's got an 80% chance of coming to pass just because I wrote it down. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. What is the third thing? It may be more subtle. Uh, the air conditioner keeps blowing my paper back around. Let's, let's read this. Let's see if you could find it. Verse number two, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Say it. So those are the three steps. Number one, get the vision. How are you going to get it? You got to seek God. You got to hear from heaven. Then you write it down. Very practical, isn't it? Write it down. Then once you've got it write, written down, what are you supposed to do? You are supposed to say it. Amen. You're supposed to say it. Visions are to be received, direction from God. It is to be written down and that it is to be spoken. This is how God does things. Right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Some people translate that, the meaning of that. Seek God's ways of doing things. You have to understand, God has a way of doing things. Find out how He does things and get in line with that. And be righteous, that means live right, live clean, and all these things will be added to you. Well, this is how God does things. He reveals His will. 
He expects it to be written down, and then He needs you and I to speak it. Now, the greatest plan that God ever accomplished with mankind is redeeming man. Isn't that right? So long before our Messiah showed up, guess what? He planned it. He revealed it. He had it written down. And it was to be spoken and preached. And only then, after a long delay, thousands of years, it came to pass. This is God's pattern. Reveal it, write it down, speak it, and it'll come to pass. Here's one thing I found in my own life. Spoken visions are visions that come to pass. But unspoken dreams are just dreams. Unspoken dreams. Some of you, you know you have a business in you. And you've known it for a long time. But it's not here. Amen? And if it's really from God, you need to write... And some of you, I'm not saying you're off track, but just be discerning. I'm not accusing anybody. Right? But it is true. Of somebody in here, I wouldn't be saying it. <laughs> Amen? Get that vision from God. Write it down so that you could hold on to it and speak it and set out in His timing and go that direction. But if you just kind of let it float around your heart and it's an occasional fleeting thought you have, you'll never do anything with it. You'll be like the average person that lives in mediocrity. They'll never do anything great. They'll never accomplish what was in their heart. Just follow the three simple steps. Three simple steps. Is that a cartoon? I think so. Yes, it is. It's a cartoon. Ryan's not paying attention to pastor or she could confirm what I'm saying. Three simple steps. Yeah. Yeah. Blue's Clues. That's right. Check me out. Anyway. <laughs> Three simple steps. Hear from God. Amen. Write it down and speak it. Unspoken dreams are nothing but dreams. That's all they will ever be. Now go over with me to Proverbs 29. <laughs> Y'all all right? Yeah. Glory to God. Now I'm doing this, you know, fairly early in December because I want you to have a ready faith. Let's start January 1 with some direction. You know, we, we had the word I was praying one day. And God, I was on my knees in my office and God said, Chris, I want you to relocate your ministry and get in position for a last day move in my spirit. Okay, I got it. I wrote it down. Amen. And we began to publish it. And as we did, we began to run with it. But it didn't come to pass the next week or the next month or the next year or the year after that or the year after that. Seven long years. But right, just what Habakkuk said, though it seem to be slow in coming, wait for it. Wait for it. Don't give up on it. For it will not tear, it will not be late. Now I thought I was really late in my timing, but not according to that. You're doing everything you know to need to, you, that you know to do. You're moving towards it. Everything after that, you just trust God. God's got a time for things. Habakkuk 2 says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. In other words, he's saying, See, 2018 is for us today the future. So the vision for 2018 for your life is future. There's an appointed time for that. But he wants you to know it now. Write it down now and begin to speak it now. Are you with me? Praise God. Only then will it come to pass. There's a lot of things God uh, had written down for us, promises, right? But if you don't ever speak it, you're never going to have it. If you never say what He's already said about you, you're not going to have it. He's already said, by His stripes you're healed. But if you don't say it, you're not going to have it. He's already said, My, I shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But if you don't say it, 
You're not going to have it. Praise God. All right, so Proverbs 29 is another verse I like along this line. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. What is going to happen for those who don't seek God and they don't get heavenly direction? Look at verse 18, Proverbs 29. It says, where there is no vision, the people do okay. No, it doesn't say that. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law or the word, happy is he. Happy is he. One translation says, where there is no divine revelation, the people cast off restraint. Now, what would that mean? Without a vision, without prophetic insight, without direction from heaven, people cast off restraint. In other words, people get undisciplined and they go all kinds of different directions. That would be true for a church that's without a vision. That would be true for a vision without a, 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 I mean a business without a vision. How about a family without a heavenly vision? People just run in all kinds of ways. Come on. And your individual life is like that. If you don't hear from God, you're going to run around trying all kinds of things. Well, let's try this job. Let's try that job. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's try this marriage. Let's try that marriage. One translation says, without prophetic insight, the people run wild. You know, one of the things that'll, that, that keeps a man going, keeps a woman going, is they heard from God and that thing is living in them. It is breathing in them. It has been branded on their heart. And they have something to get up for in the morning. They are not afraid of a Monday. They are not living for Friday. Every day they are advancing. They are living for. They are preparing for. They are running with a heavenly vision. And they're going somewhere. And things are progressing. Amen. This church may not be just this big flashbang of explosive, you know, growth on the scene. People writing magazines about us. But what we can testify about is things are moving forward and they are going up and they are getting better and they are getting more glorious and we are going someplace in God. Amen. Amen. And that ought to be the way it is for your life. And if that's not, if you're going all different ways, it's just, you're not a bad person. It, it, God loves you. It just simply means... You have not sought God to the degree where He has birthed in you a desire that will define your life. Amen. That will set your life on course and set you on a direction. And you will be fulfilled. You will have joy. You will have peace. Amen. Even in the midst of struggle. Even in the midst of pressure. Even in the, it'll, be, it'll be the right kind of pressure. It'll be the pressure that means I'm fighting for something. I am going somewhere. This pressure is not meaningless pressure. But it's I am going to get past this test, past this circumstance because of where God is taking me, where God's taking my finances, where he's taking my health. Some people, they got all kinds of pressure and they don't even know what they're fighting for. People asked uh, the great uh, Dr. Lester Sumrall, way up in his 80s, still uh, had a full itinerary, traveling all over the world. He had like 40 or 50 ongoing book manuscripts that they found after he passed away, after he went to heaven. And somebody asked him in those latter years, what keeps you going after all these years? You know what he said? He said, I'm interested in what I'm doing. Amen. What kept him going all those years? Feeding the hungry, going to the nations. Teaching the body of Christ, raising up Bible schools, raising up churches, writing books, writing materials, writing teaching curriculum. How, what kept him going? Wear a young man out trying to keep up with him. Something real simple but profound. I'm interested in what I'm doing. Are you interested in what's going on in your life? I'm telling you what, you're called for a lot more than the mundane and the routine. And the same old rat race and same old rigmarole. Now there's a lot of routine to what Amber and I do, but we love it. It's a routine that if we'll do it right, is, is moving us forward in a, in a particular direction. But you need to pray about where you stand in your life right now today on this verse. Without, where there is no vision, 
Uh, could somebody give me the amplified translation of that? Where there is no redemptive revelation of God. Isn't that what it says? Where there is no redemptive revelation of God, it says the people perish. Uh, yeah. You, do you have redemptive revelation of God? Do you know it's His will to heal you? That it's His will to forgive you? That it's His will to prosper you? To work in your life, to move you forward, that He's got something for you to do. Amen. Amen. And pursue it with all your might. Listen, I just wouldn't pay the price I pay. I, I wouldn't endure being away from my family, being out here in Kentucky bored. I'm not bored. I'm not bored in what I'm doing. Amen. I'm interested in what I'm doing. Anyway, praise God. Let's get ready to shut this down. Glory to God. So, some practical things. Amen about this. You need to ask yourself, what do you want your 2018 to look like? And let God talk to you about it. His, his view is bigger than your view. He's got a higher perch. He can see over that big peak that you can't see. Amen? But you could just get there with your husband or by yourself and you say, and just, just contemplate. Just dream again. Just imagine, what do I want my 2018 to look like? For some of you, I can hear you. I want it to be peaceful. God has that for you. Write it down. Find you two or three scriptures and then begin to say it. I'm walking in the peace of God. His peace guards my heart and mind. I am not troubled of the, and I'm fully funded. You know, talk it. Write yourself up a confession. Write it down and then begin to say it. What do you want, what do you want your marriage and your family to look like at the end of the year? I'd like Amber and I to still be together. I'm taking anything for granted. Amen. I'd like us to be, I'd like her to be more into me, more in love with me at the end of the year than she is today. Well, thinking about that, I might need to do something. Hey, there's a clue. I might need to buy me a gift or do something. Do something unexpected. Right? Yeah, praise God. God might give you an idea. How about your finances? What do you want your balance sheet to look like? Now, don't write down, you know, if you're uh, just filed for bankruptcy tomorrow and you, by the end of 2018, you won't have a million dollars in the bank. That's, you know, come on. You don't have, it's not that God can't do that, but you don't have faith for it. Whatever you write down, you're going to have to have faith for it if you want it to come to pass. A ready faith for 20, so if you write down the outlandish, you don't have faith for that, then it's not going to come to pass. Right? Amen. But what can you believe? Can you believe, I, God, I can believe I can have a lot more money in the bank at the end of the year than I do right now. And I can have a lot less debt at the, at the end of 2018 than I do right now. And then find you some scriptures to go with that. And then begin to say it every day. What do you want your health to look like? What do you want your ministry to look like? Think about these things and write them down. Here's some other things to think about. What do you need to overcome? This might be humble for you to write down. Right? I have an anger problem. I'm going to conquer that in 2018. <laughs> right? I'm a negative Nancy, but I'm going to change that in 2018. Come on, there's no doubt some things. You're not looking exactly like Jesus yet. There's some things, right? Well, how about not going another decade with that on the list? How about making some progress in that arena? As part of the vision. What personal character issues do you need to overcome? Because I tell you what, overcoming those are necessary to move forward in what God has for you. You're going to stop being a worry wart. Right? You're going to stop being moody. 
You might get up every day and as part of your confession sheet say, I put my foot to the neck of moodiness in my life. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I am a happy person. Ha, ha, ha. And fake it till you make it. I'm, I'm being serious about it. We would all appreciate it if you would do that. All right. I'm almost done. Think about what goals should you set to achieve and get the Holy Ghost in on it. Right? Have divinely inspired and guided goals that you want to achieve in every important arena that's important to you or that's, uh, that touches your life. Then third, what is it that you're believing? What do you want God to do for you next year? The Bible says you war, you fight, you commit murder, you got all this stuff going on, and you don't have it because you don't ask. You have not because you ask not. What do you want God to do for you? What can you believe? Can you really have faith that he, your house could be paid off by the end of next year? Listen, could he do it? Oh, yeah. He could do it. Right? I dreamed for a few, for, well, several years for a newer vehicle. And I got it. We believe for many years for uh, the house God had for us. And we got it. Amen. And that tractor I'm believing for, guess what? It's going to come to pass. Come out and take a ride on it when it comes. Praise God, but it's coming. How do I know? Because I believe it in my heart and I say it with my mouth. Amen. 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 Praise God. What is it that you're believing God to do for you in 2018? And then uh, lastly, what I have down here, and you might think of a lot more, is what advancements in your calling? What about your calling? You know, is God calling you to a season of preparation? Is he wanting you to step out and expand and, and take on ministry projects that have been two, three times bigger than anything you've ever attempted to do before? I've got it in my heart. and Dr. Jacob's already agreed that it's the Holy Ghost for us to have a major old-time miracle meeting. I mean, drive around with bullhorns in the back of pick to pickup trucks and, it, you know, praise God and advertise miracle signs and wonders. Well, praise God, we've never done anything like that before, but we're going to set out to do it. Amen. What advancements in your calling are you wanting to see progress in? Write it down. Amen. How about this? What would the Lord have you do uh, to help us with the building in 2018? These are all things, and on Sunday we'll make it available, a, a form for you that will give you guidance in these areas. Amen. And so, but I wanted to minister that to you and encourage you to, to take the time to get yourself ready for 2018. It's going to be a good year. Yes, it is. I don't have some sort of slogan to tell you. God hadn't spoken to me about it yet, but it's going to be a good year. Amen. Hallelujah. It's going to be a fruitful year for this ministry and those connected with us. It's going to be a breakout year for Chris Cody Ministries. I just know it. We're going to get more books into the hands of more people than any year, we, right? How do I know that? I'm just declaring it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. More people mentored, more people trained up, more people discipled, the church busting at the seams. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, go ahead and put your stuff away and maybe go ahead and stand up on your feet. Father, we come before you tonight.